tell us about how you decided to come up with such a device. Well, as a physician and a, a surgeon training in Toronto, I've experienced a lot of encounters with these critically low birth weight infants. They are incredibly challenging patients, and of course, they um, really profoundly affected me. Mm -hmm. The frustration of not being able to improve their outcomes with our conventional modalities of care that are currently available really was what led to the inspiration for the artificial womb. So how exactly does the device work from the moment a pr the preemies are, are born? So essentially, from the time of birth, which would be by cesarean section, the umbilical vessels are quickly cannulated. Um, this really means placing small tubes so that the blood can pass through the umbilical cord mm -hmm. to our artificial placenta, which is basically a lung that exchanges oxygen to give the baby oxygen and release mm -hmm. of carbon dioxide. That blood is circulated through the baby by the power of the fetal heart, as it would be in utero. The umbilical cord is then clamped, and the babe is delivered into our fluid incubator for the remainder of the period of support, which is about four weeks. Mm -hmm. In the human context, that would bridge a 23-week gestation infant who has an expected survival of less than 10% to a 28-weeker with a very good chance for healthy long-term survival. I'm just going to ask our control room if we have photos of this device. Uh, maybe we could show it and you could just talk us through it. Do we, have those, do we have those photos? Let's show the photos of the actual device uh, that we're talking about, this artificial womb, and maybe you could, is this, is this what we're looking at? So the actual device is two things. It is the bag that you're seeing there, in which the fetus, in this case the fetal lamb, is submerged in fluid. Um, you could see there the uh, tube mm. coming at mm -hmm. the level of the umbilical cord. That's the, uh, the passage of blood to the oxygenator. And that's basically the entire apparatus. It's a pretty right. small device. It takes up about two square feet in the lab. The fluid is warm and sterile. Uh, with the exception of taking pictures, the lambs are kept quiet in the dark mm -hmm. as they would be in the uterus. So we've really tried to recreate exactly what the fetus experiences in the womb. Wow, and that is fascinating to us. So why did you test this device on pre with premature lambs? Lambs have always been the classical mm -hmm. animal model for fetal surgical intervention really due to the similarity of their physiology and development as a fetus, and also mm. because their size is very comparable to a human infant. So they're a very good mm -hmm. surrogate to let us perform pretty rigorous investigation. Now, it looked as though that's airtight, as airtight as it can get, and that's the point, right? That is, yes, absolutely. Sterility is very mm -hmm. important. So one of the problems that premature babies face currently in conventional incubators is that they're exposed to the air. Uh, that sets them up for a high chance of developing infection. Mm -hmm. The protection that's offered with our device is really the sterile, fluid-filled environment, um, which really prevents any pathogens from gaining exposure to the fetus. Were there challenges in, that you came across in testing this artificial womb? Yes, this really represents three years of very dogged work. Uh, in the beginning, uh, it was sort of just myself and uh, uh, my co-inventor mm -hmm. uh, and um, this work really involved rolling out a sleeping bag and you know camping out beside these lambs for weeks and weeks at a time mm. while we moved through prototypes and identified the challenges and limitations that ultimately led to the device that we uh, we have presently. It was one of the most challenging things I've embarked on as a scientist, but certainly also the most rewarding. Yeah, I bet. And so human testing is still three to five years away, is that right? So what are the next steps? So we've been in conversation with the FDA. We've had several meetings to discuss the timeline and the design of the human clinical trial. Mm -hmm. Right now we're completing some formal preclinical lamb experiments. And our timeline, researchers are famously... Uh, keen to overestimate, but we expect that three to five years is a reasonable timeline mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. begin trials in, in human infants. Dr. Partridge, it was good of you to take the time. Thank you very much. And that's Dr. Emily Partridge with me in the studio. She's a key member of the research team working on the artificial womb.